Hey, welcome back to Flash Tutorials with Alan Becker. Today we are going to be talking about sound effects and how you can add sound effects to your Flash animations. So today we're going to be adding sound effects to this animation that I actually created specifically for this tutorial. Yeah, a uh, guy gets punched and then that guy gets run over by car. So we could add a lot more spice to this animation with sound effects. So step one in getting sound effects in your animation is to get the sound effects in the first place. Um, I will show you a website where you can find a treasure chest full of sound effect websites and that is bluevertigo.com.ar and some really good ones in this list, I mean, this whole website has stock photos, stock videos, vector clip art. Anyway, um, around the end is all the sounds. Where do they go? Um, one of my favorites is Find Sounds, where you can just where you search for it and then. You get all these waveforms and you can print <coughs> them. And if you like them, right, you right click on it, save link as, and put it wherever you want. Um, another good one is Partners in Rhyme. You just click on Free Sound Effects. And you have all these different sounds to choose from. Punch. Yeah. Another good one is Sound Goal. I actually never used this before, but it looks pretty good. So, you've got a lot of things to choose from. Um, so, um, now that we've got our sound effects, we need to put them in our Flash library. So, I happen to have a folder filled with sound effects that I've collected over the years, and I already know which sound effects I want to put in this animation. Um, first one is going to be Horse Hoof Thud, and that one sounds like that. And I want a Power Whoosh. Where is my power whoosh? Put that in there. Sounds like this. And I want a punch for sure. And I want a car driving. Drive by. So you just drag and drop them into the library and they will be imported into your phone. <laughs> Yeah. So now we want to add these sound effects to the animation. So what you can do is just drag and drop them into your frames that you want them to be. Like any frame, no matter what frame it is, you can add a sound to it. What I like to do is create a specific layer for the sound effects so that it don't interfere with the frames. So I'm going to make two new layers and call them both sound effects. I like to have a lot of sound effects layers so I can put them over each other so I can see them because um, when you put them down, you can actually see the waveform. Okay, so I click F6, make a new frame, right when he's putting his foot down, and then I put my thud, and I just drag and drop it into the stage, and then it appears right here can see the waveform right there and then you can hear it so I want him to do that same effect again I hit F6 drag and drop and then nice and then well he gets punched so I'm going to F6 
give it a punch. Nice. I also want this guy to whoosh into the screen, so I'm going to give him a power whoosh. Nice. Whoa. So next, I want the car, the Lamborghini, to drive by. So let's see, I'm going to start this drive by here. Maybe I'll start it here because I want to hear the whole thing. So it's good to see the waveform because you know when it's going to stop. So it's going to sound like this. Good. And then right here, I want to give it a punch sound effect also. So let's see how that sounds. All right, so really quickly, we just added some life to our animations. Okay, so a few things you need to know about sound effects is um, the properties of each sound. So when I go to the properties panel, when I click on the frame where the sound is located, I notice that there are many options here um, under the sync. So I can make this sound stream or event, start or stop. Um, start and stop are mostly I think for when the sound is in code or something but also when you have a song like a long song and you want it to stop you can use a frame and make it stop I'm not exactly sure in my years of using flash I've never had to mess with this so much the difference between stream and event is um, in how they are synced up to match the frames of the animation uh, an event sound will start and continue independently of the frames of the animation if you set it to stream it will match up to the animation so if the animation slows down the sound will slow down too and it makes it sync up much better but uh, event sounds will play much more smoothly because they're independent of the animation um, also when you set it to stream you'll be able to preview it by dragging However, if these are all set to uh, event, then I wouldn't be able to do that. See, it's all silent, but once you hit play, you can hear them. Yeah, and also when it's set to stream, let me just set these all back to stream, then if you make a new empty keyframe, then it will only play in the, in the frames that are showing. See? But if it were set to event, then that wouldn't be the case. It would just start and then continue. Yeah, I even stop the animation, but the, the sound goes until it's done. So, yeah. Um, it doesn't matter so much, but it's good to know. Okay. So what I want to do now is to get my car sound, my drive-by car sound, to sound like it is going from the left speaker to the right speaker. So I can actually do that if I go into the frame of the drive-by sound, and I go under effect. So if I drop down this menu, you see many options. You can make the sound only come from the left speaker, the right speaker, fade from left to right, fade from right to left, fade in, fade out, or custom. So what I could do is a simple fade left to right. And that sounds great. But I just want to show you how to use the custom because sometimes you'll be faced with many um, complicated sound um, patterns that you want. So yeah, if you look in this um, custom box, you see that the top represents the left speaker and the bottom represents the right speaker. 
So as the time goes forward, represented by these frames, which you can change to into time or whatever, um, the sound will gradually decrease on the left speaker and increase on the right speaker. If I wanted to, I could add keyframes by just clicking on the um, line and then just clicking and dragging and moving them around, or I can get rid of them by just dragging them off. Um, I could, if I wanted to, make the whole thing a little quieter by moving them both down, but whatever. Just so you know, that's how you do it. So, now it sounds pretty great. Um, one thing that you need to make sure of is that your publish settings are correct for your sound. If I go to File, Publish Settings, then under Flash, the Flash tab, there is the audio stream and the audio event settings. So here it says that my sounds are going to be converted into mono, and I do not want that because I spent all that time making that card go from the left to right, so it sounded cool. So what I want to do is set it to stereo. And um, right now it says the convert stereo to mono is impossible to uncheck, but if I increase the bit rate, then I can uncheck that. And I actually want to increase the bit rate a lot because I want the sound to be nice and make the quality best. And click OK. And why not just do it for event as well? Just in case. So yeah, let's publish that and listen. And let's publish preview that and listen. <laughs> That is beautiful. All right, cool. So please do not ask me for my folder full of sound effects so that you can use them. I actually think that it is a good practice to get out there and look for sound effects yourself so that you can get a good sense of how you can get the sounds that you want. You can also record your own sounds using if you if you have a webcam or if you have a sound recorder or something. Or you can take already existing sound effects and merge them together or edit them using simple programs. Um, so I hope that helped. If you have any more questions, contact me through my website. And I will see you guys later.